Hello everyone, welcome to Japanese Tatami Room Part 2. Today we're going to be focusing on making the foods on the table, which is my favorite part of any scene. Uh, if you enjoy this content, this commentary tutorial so far, please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. So firstly, before making any food, we're going to make obviously a container for the food. Making these plates are very simple, you can slow down the video and try to follow, it should be very straightforward. And now firstly we're going to make the wagyu beef. Um, wagyu beef are just these basically Japanese um, beef steak they're not very big, each slice is quite small and um, as you can see the shape is very simple all you have to do is just find a good stock photo, a stock image of uh, a good marbling wagyu and just slap it on there it's as simple as that And secondly, I realized that it was a bit empty, especially from the camera view, you can see that it's kind of empty and a bit lonely, nothing, nothing much is going on in that corner of the room, so I decided to add a little bit of a reading corner there. So the cushion is almost exactly like how I made it for the chairs as well, very simple, very easy. And here I am making a gas stove for the sukiyaki. So as I mentioned in the first video, this is going to be like a hot pot, which means that it's basically cooked on the table, so obviously you need uh, a stove for that. And even though it's a very simple stove, I try to kind of vary the color, uh, make the middle bit kind of metallic, so it looks more realistic. And now it's time to make the pot for the sukiyaki soup. It's kind of the same method that I used for making um, the plate. It's pretty straightforward. You can add a bit of a solidify um, modifier to make it thicker. And I obviously I duplicated one of the face, one of the surface for it to be, to be the kind of transparent soup. I love the fact in that in Blender it's so easy to make um, some sort of, you know, like a cup, a mug, a pot, a container, it's just so easy, like once you get the basic geometry sh shape right, just shade it smooth and it's automatically going to look quite nice. Obviously there are some minor adjustments that you need to make as well, but it's really not that hard. And now this is my favorite part, adding the meat into the soup.
here I am making a basket for the vegetables. It's kind of a display sort of container. And I've done this in my previous video when I made um, uh, for the bakery. It's a kind of a simple method if you want to make something like this quite easily without all the hassle. And now I am making, uh, I think this is called a Chinese cabbage. It's the same idea as the beef, but obviously the shape of the cabbage is a bit more organic. So what you have to do is just basically use the knife tool, which is just pressing K on the keyboard to, yeah, to cut out the shape of the cabbage and delete the rest of the um, surface that's not needed. And next thing you do, you can extrude the surface a little bit, give it a little bit of dimension and create sort of a, a more dimensional um, surface here to make it more slightly more real. But again, this is a very rough um, attempt <laughs> to, to do the cabbage. Uh, if it's a very if it's a closer shot to the food, I would say I will put more effort into it. But for this thing, uh, this scene, I think it does um, what I want, and it's sufficient enough. And here I'm making some tofu. So if you want to know how the color of the tofu is set up, you can slow down the video there. Basically, I give it a little bit of su subsurface because in real life, uh, most of the foods that you have um, kind of the light can go through the food. So giving the subsurface makes it mo look more realistic. And here I believe this is called a shiitake mushroom. Again, uh, you can see that the shapes that I use here are so basic and so easy to do. And I believe in that, especially in low poly uh, uh, modeling, you should be able to get the essence of the object pretty easily through some basic shapes. So it shouldn't be too hard. It's just all fun and uh, quite simple. And since we're making the far corner there a reading corner, we need to add a few books as well. Okay, the scene is already coming together now, but we are missing a lot of lights. And the first thing that I added is for the gas stove to have this sort of uh, blue um, hydrogen gas sort of... I might be completely wrong, <laughs> but it usually looks blue. So that's why I added a blue light over there, just a point light, because it does the job. It's supposed to be very small and focused. 
And then, like I said in the last video, I added an area light um, outside the window for it to shine through um, the, the, the bamboo photo there. You can also make the bamboo photo itself as an emission object. That would completely work as well. some small uh, spotlights to highlight um, the, the decor there and also our lovely bonsai tree. And I think that's almost basically it for this scene. If you, have, if you have any questions, please comment down below. I will be sure to answer all of them. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a like. Thank you and see you next time.